What's up guys, I'll be showing you guys how to use Hierarchical LOD in Unreal Engine 4. And w essentially what we'll be doing is that we'll be combining a bunch of just tiny little matches together and those, these will be made into clusters. And once they're made into clusters, they'll be made into one um, static match as opposed to three, which re reduces the number of, call di of calls that the CPU has to do. And this just generally means it, it draws it all as one as opposed to drawing each individually, which saves performance. It also combines all the textures together, which, although it is optional, um, but having all the textures, textures mixed together in or also called as atlasing, all, to, all of them together reduces the number of textures it has to call, which reduces the performance it takes up. So for now, let's just add a couple more of these rocks from the last tutorial. Um, how's your day been? Yeah, mine, mine's been pretty good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And let's just add a little chair and remove this rock because I hate that rock. And add a big rock. Oh, no, no, let's keep it tiny. Just a whole bunch of rocks here, and maybe a bush. Oof. Oh, it's a little sensual. Okay. Uh, okay. So what you want to do now is that you want to go to Window, and make sure that World Settings is viewable, and you want to type in LOD, and then this should be unclicked when you go over here. But then click Enable Hierarchical LOD System. So when you see do this. Sorry, let me just remove these for the sake of tutorial. Okay, now once you do that, you go to Windows, Hierarchical LOD Outliner, and it'll show you this. So now we're going to set up how many different LODs, or just the different clusters, how far away they can be before they can be considered a cluster. So for now, let's add, click this twice, and we'll have HLOD0, which is different from LOD from the previous tutorial. So, and you open this up, here and, and then cluster generation settings let's set this to 500 for the tutorial and then HLOD level 1 we'll set this to 1250 and you'll notice that when you change this it changes the desired filling percentage this essentially means um, let me just first let's generate clusters okay whatever Okay, so now we generate the clusters. These aren't built. That basically means they're not yet made into a, one static mesh, but it'll still allow you to see what things are going to be combined together, right? So, if you go to LED level zero over here, um, when you click on it, you'll notice that it's combining. Let's go to. Okay, so you'll notice this little circle over here. Let's move this out of the way. This little circle basically means that everything within this radius is going to be turned into one solid mesh, um, one static mesh that um, will, re will reduce the overall draw calls that you have to do. And then if you notice, I click on LED Actor 5 here, it does one around this as well. So I mean, these four things will be turned into one mesh and one texture, which will reduce the number of draw calls. So once you have this, you can um, go under mesh generation settings before you generate proxy meshes and then merge settings and then let's me open this up for you uh -huh. okay so under here you can select what is going to happen when you once you generate these um, you can merge the materials which is usually by default pretty good because it makes them all the textures together you can change texture size um, you can make it so it can combine, it can generate a metallic map for these new static mesh that you're combining, roughness map. Um, but you generally want to avoid using anything with the masked sublayer in materials or anything that's like transparent. You usually just want to remove them. Um, from the clusters, you can just right click and then remove from cluster. I'm not gonna remove the rock because I, I want it for explain, um, for for to show you guys. So 
let's just generate the proxy meshes. So depending on how many items you have on the screen and how many triangles are there, this can take a very long time. Um, if you watched the Unreal Engine video, they took them about 20 minutes to l for that level they were trying to generate proxies for, and you were just standing there, just staring at them, sucking their thumbs, talking about, um, talking with Twitch. So what you want to do is just click here. It should be quick in my computers because we barely have anything on the level. So yeah, okay. And now you'll notice that once you, you'll notice that it doesn't look like much changed, but the circle went away. And when you click here and you go to details, you'll notice that. Oh, let's maybe that one didn't work. I guess. Okay, this one worked. I don't know why. Yeah, that one came out weird. It, may, it might be because of the foliage. So I'll try to avoid foliage, I guess. But if you click on this LOD Actor 5, which highlights this one, and then you click on Static Mesh, you'll notice that, whoa, this is weird. Why is it showing all three? Is I only clicked on one Static Mesh, right? It's not like there's, it's not like there's more than one here. So basically, what it did is that it made them all into one Static Mesh. So when you when you loads them, it loads them all together as one, and it also loads all the material as one. Because if you go, if you notice, oh, oh. Oh, I can't. Okay, this is weird. Usually, it'd be this rock over here. This is this used to be the material for the. This is the material for all the three other rocks, but I added a chair in the mix, and what that did is that in this texture map now, you'll notice that the chair texture map is next to the rock one. So it basically what it does is it atlases or combines all the textures into one. So there's fewer draw calls. So now that you have, you'll only be drawing this texture once because it's applying it to all of them via the UV maps and that means there's low performance um, it takes le it takes less for it to to load the static mesh so this is one way to do it and you can do it for different clusters of items that are determined from this different distances from each other for example this has I don't think well Right now, it I don't have anything far away. I don't have anything um, far away enough to be 1,250 units from each other in order to be considered a group. But if you did have items from a certain distance, you can do that. Alternatively, you can also um, just add something. Like so, let's say if you go to the world outliner, and then you go to rock, right, and then you want to put it under. LOD level 1, which means it is farther away. You can drag and drop this rock into already oh yeah, if it's already clustered you can't do it. So generally things that are already really close to each other will be clustered first and then if there are things left over that are far away from each other these pillars are farther than 1250 so they weren't clustered. But if you had things that were within that, that general distance from each other um, they'd be clustered together as well, and then you can you can you can just generate meshes. So this is really good if you're just putting stuff together. So if you're like, uh, if you are I guess on a rock mountain and you're doing a, a plateau with uh, towers and stuff around you, you can all just make that all one mesh, and you don't you don't have to preemptively make it all one mesh in Maya or whatever 3D modeling program you use. So yeah. Remember, so this saves you time by making them all one mesh, reducing the number of call volumes to the textures and the static meshes, and it'll make your open world game a little bit better. So, see you guys in the next video.